our first matchup in a while versus with two characters you probably weren't expecting. So let me let me explain some. Actually, I'm gonna wait till the end of the video. I, I'm just gonna get to the versus matchup now, and then we'll get to that at the end of the video. So with that said, we have a couple of same old categories. Um, Akuma versus Rao. I was using Akuma for a separate versus matchup, which will come out after my next How Powerful video. But I decided uh, since I was gonna be Shish Akuma, and Kyle actually asked me to do this matchup. Uh, he asked for Rao from Fista and Northstar versus Akuma. So thought, all right, let's see how it goes. You know, two badass martial artists. <laughs> well, one badass martial artist. And uh, let's see how it goes. So can they kill each other? Yeah, uh, both characters are relatively human. No real qualms there. I couldn't find anything saying Akuma was immortal or anything. And Rao was still human. In fact, Rao dies at the end of Fista or halfway through Fista and Northstar. So yeah, no problems there. So in terms of physical strength, okay. Now, because you guys seem to, at the very least, really appreciate Kyle providing the feats, and because I've been getting criticized uh, a little more harshly on my more recent How Powerfuls uh, for not including where the fuck the feats and powers and shit comes from, I did try my best to, at the very least, tell you where the feats come from. You're not going to see a picture or a video this time. You hopefully will see one during the next versus matchup, but I'm still going to be lazy for this one. Sorry, I'm not exactly fucking 100% fucking ready to just jump in the fucking, like, six hours worth of editing it's probably like three but not important not the point so in terms of physical strength uh, i could not unfortunately find where akuma's physical strength feat or lifting strength feat comes from however the versus battle wiki does scale him in the tier below rao i know where rao's comes from that one was easy uh but i couldn't really find anything for akuma physical strength wise i believe he scales to someone but i could not find who he scales to directly that's probably on me uh, but even then, um, he, Versus Battle Wiki does tier him below. And while I'm not too fond of Versus Battle Wiki's power scaling as a whole, in my own separate research for Street Fighter, I do kind of agree overall with their scaling of Akuma on their page. So I, I have no qualms using their page for this one. Uh, Rao is superhuman as well, both superhuman. But Rao is rated higher because he scales to Kenshiro, who lifted a giant fucking rock that was scaled to 300 or calculated to 300 tons. Uh, this was a casual Kenshiro doing this as well. This wasn't even the Kenshiro who fought Rao, the serious Kenshiro. So, yeah. So, Rao's definitely going to take uh, physical strength there. So, obviously, next up we have speed. A very important category. Uh, Akuma seems to have a speed feat coming from a satellite scaling the Bison. I, belie I believe this is fucking Street Fighter 3 Alpha or something. I don't know. It's it it's a game that apparently is like a basically not fucking canon. But, you know, whatever. It is what it is. Uh, but so yeah, so he scales to a feat from M. Bison with a satellite feat, uh, because M. Bison, well M. Bison doesn't dodge the fucking satellite, he gets fucking straight up hit by the beam and killed, uh, apparently because he was able to react to it, that scales to Akuma. Uh, I did try looking for something else, but I couldn't really find anything. Now this could be my lack of just what well, dealing with fighting games in general, because a lot of scaling feats and fighting games come from either other characters' endings and shit. Like uh, uh, I, I'm researching King of Fires as well uh, at the same time, and their speed feat comes from the endings in the 2000 uh, game where characters can react to a satellite laser and actually fucking live. Um, so yeah, uh, Akuma Mass. I couldn't find anything, you know. To really anything to either change this feat or go against it as far as I could tell. That could just be I was a pretty shitty researcher. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below or let me know if you guys have any other feats. But so, uh, Massively Hypersonic is what it will scale to. Uh, pretty far as well. I think it's like Massively Hypersonic Plus. I think it's in like the fucking 3000 range in terms of fucking Mach if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, well I can't remember the exact number. It was somewhere between 1000 Mach and like 3000 Mach if I remember correctly. Which is the range of Massively Hypersonic. Uh, so let's continue. Uh, Rao, okay, so I'm gonna get some shit here, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna defend myself uh, before I go any further. Uh, Fist of the North Star statements are basically feats. Uh, the statements characters provide are usually well within the realms of their abilities demonstrated or well within things they could already do. I say this because I'm gonna use Han's statement to scale Rao. So Han in Fist of the North Star is one of the generals of Osra. He's actually one of the top tiers of the verse. Not God tier, but he is one of the top tiers. And Han states that his attacks are so fast, they have never left the shadow. Now, I don't need to tell you how a shadow is created, but a shadow is created by an object blocking light. If Han is stating that his attacks have never left the shadow... This would mean his attacks have never blocked light long enough 
to even, well, you know, leave that. This should make his attacks faster than light. No problems there. There's also another statement in Juza Gaiden from a character who was vastly inferior to the Nanto 6 and the like, claiming that his attacks are so fast that he can uh, cut through light or cut light itself. Basically trying to say he moves faster than light, but you know, whatever. So I'm gonna I'm gonna scale routes uh, to faster than light combat speed because I do you know think statements do matter in Fist of the North Star and that statement should be faster than light by default. And uh, and before someone says something like oh what if he's just faster than eyesight? No, because we do see that the attacks later on can be seen. So by only other star members though, other like high level fighters they can't see it. Only star members can or people who have learned a martial arts style of you know the stars. So, uh, Han's statement seems perfectly valid. There's no real counterpoints there as well. Uh, so, uh, speed. So, in case I didn't mention, in terms of physical strength, Rao wins. He has scaled higher. In terms of speed, Rao wins. He scaled massively higher. Uh, or at the very least should be, given that statement. In terms of durability, uh, Rao's durability should be country level, based on being able to keep up and fight Kenshiro. Uh, also, there is a calculation that his Toki, when he's... Uh, we'll get to that in uh, raw power, so if you have questions about that, we'll wait. Akuma. City level, since his durability should scale to his AP, and Calx put his feats around town level okay gotta talk about this one for a minute as well so akuma destroys a mountain and akuma destroys an island now if you're a standard person you're gonna say yep that looks like a mountain level feat to me and yep that looks like an island level feat to me uh... but um not exactly so someone actually sat down and calculated it and you can find the calculations of versus battle wiki to check for yourself and the calculations have them at town level which is actually lower than a, skin, a feat used for Ryu. So it's not exactly very helpful here when it comes to his own feats. Uh, feel free to check the calculations yourself. Just type in versus battle wiki Akuma and it'll be right there where he's tiered at. I would link it, but um, I, 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 if you guys really want me to link to shit in the future and stuff, I'll do that. But for this video, I'm going to try and be as lazy as possible still. Um, However, again, Ryu does have feet around city level, and we'll talk about this feat because I kind of disagree with it. But for the sake of being argumentative and fair, we will include a mountain level Akuma in the final verdict and a islander level Akuma as well. If that you know, just to be as fair as possible. Uh, that being said, I do have to. No, we'll talk about this when we get to AP. So with that said, uh, Rao will win durability because he does have a better feat that puts him at a higher level than Akuma. Even if we were to pull Akuma at mountain level, Rao would still win that feat because country level is higher, you know, destructive capacity than mountain. So on the wrong power and attack potency. Okay, so Rao's pretty easy. Akuma's gonna be more difficult to explain. So Rao's country level is based on uh, splitting clouds after losing the fight uh, to Kenshiro. So how does this work exactly? It's basically displacing air, essentially. Well, basically it's, because uh, I'll be honest with you, I'm. If I learn too much about calculations, I might want to start calculating my own shit, and I don't want to take that route. Um, so he does that after he's basically near death. He's basically lost most of his fucking strength at this point, and he's still able to do that casually. It's actually the final thing he does before he dies, because that's basically the final thing that kills him. Um, and he does scale the Kenshiro as well, who does scale the country level as well. Um, Akuma. This is going to be where things get a little more complicated. Akuma is city level based on destroying several mountains. That is what I typed in, but that was inaccurate. I've already explained how his feet works. He's scaled to city level because of fucking Ryu. More specifically, one feat in particular where... And now, I could be wrong here, but this is one of the versus battle wiki had, and I couldn't really find any other feats to support this. Again, could be just my poor research in Street Fighter. Uh, oh, and by the way, uh, I should, I'm going to put this in the description, but in case you guys don't read descriptions, I'm not using the comics. Because I don't understand the kinicity of the comics. I'm trying to stick strictly with gameplay and what's in the game because I can't understand what the fuck's going on with the comics. Anyways, and by that I mean I don't know which ones can and which ones aren't. Okay, so M. Bison, in his hypothetical non canon ending, defeats Ryu and by using Ryu's body to power his laser beam, is able to use that power to destroy a city. And that's where city level comes from, apparently. Now I don't think it's very I don't think it's very fair to use non-canon material, but I did think about it for a while, and I did I don't know I, I've got a bit of a mixed bag on it because it is a non-canon event, but it's not exactly something massively out of fucking nowhere where I don't think it can be used, 
And I do like using hypothetical non-canon areas to support things. I just don't know if that's like something you should validly use for power scaling directly. Again, there's nothing like inherently wrong with it. And I do know there are multiple endings, but like, so then again, mentioning back King of Fighters, multiple endings have characters reacting to the laser beam, uh, at the very least two, but you know, obviously only one team can win. So I, I've just kind of come to accept that with fighting games, even if the endings aren't directly canon, they're not crazy out of the world, like sort of like, unless they're super fucking crazy, I think they could be used, but I don't know, it just feels a little weird using a non-canon event to scale character. Uh, either way, he is stronger than Ryu by a pretty significant margin, so being city level, I don't think is a fucking massive stretch to begin with. Then you also have Shinakuma as well, which is a canon version of a stronger Akuma, but as far as I can tell, Shinakuma has no real direct feats of his own. So he is stronger, but the difference is about the same. Uh, if he is stronger, I doubt it's massively stronger, but again, uh, we can't really confirm that as far as I can tell. So powers and abilities should be pretty fucking easily to go through. Let's go ahead and break this down. Um, obviously superhuman, both of them. Uh, Rao, we're gonna start off with Rao. Master of Hokuto Shinken. Basically fucking pressure point manipulation on a super massive fucking scale. Uh, Aura, possesses a fine aura that protects him and allows him to attack others from a distance. Chi manipulation, sleep manipulation based on pressure points, death manipulation based on pressure points, family manipulation based on pressure points, instinctive reaction, intang intangibility, and void manipulation with Muso Tenso. Muso Tenso is made up of nothingness, renders Rao intangible, and allows him to erase others from existence. Precognition, gets permissions of other future fighters' future attacks. Statistics amplification, can hit certain pressure points to make himself stronger. Uh, that and it's also leaving out because again I do trust powers and abilities versus battle key, but it's also leaving out the fact that his fighting style inherently makes his fist stronger. So for whatever reason you're equal to Rao or a little stronger than him, when you are actually fighting Rao, uh, he'll get stronger as the fight progresses because that's what his fighting style does. Uh, force field creation with via aura, uh, telekinesis via aura, power nullification. This is just basically pressure points again. Regeneration low mid. Uh, resistance to heat, poisons, and clairvoyance. Usual of the, users of the Hokuto Arts can bend their fates how they choose, making it difficult to read their destinies. Okay, pretty straightforward, pretty easy bullshit. Akuma, uh, superhuman physical characteristics, acrobatics, key manipulation, master of assassination martial art known as uh, Ansatsuken, master of the Satsui no Hado, sergeant murderous intent, and eight key, which increases his fighting capabilities and the strength of his key attacks, resistance to soul absorption, Via Mudo Tensho, possibly possible corruption type two could possibly spread a Satsuna Hado upon an injured opponent. Can teleport and also turns in him into a half demon. Can also use the raging demon, an attack that can destroy the whole soul if they do not empty their soul from all negative feelings such as rage, hate, darkness, desires, and intangibility. Enhance physical stats and key manipulation. This is for Shin. Shinakuma is Akuma is most powerful with his morals off and unleashing his full power. So it also forgets to mention that Rao has Nanto Seiken. We actually do see that he knows these techniques. At the very least, he knows the Crimson Crane of the South Star, which is actually one of the better ones, just used by one of the shittier fighters, ironically enough. So, with that said, uh, I don't think I really need to get too deep into this, but I'll go ahead and sort of break it down. Uh, Rao wins pretty fucking easily. Right off the bat, uh, faster than light versus massively hypersonic. It's a speed blitz on a massive fucking scale. Then we also have AP and durability. Even if we give Akuma the ban for the down put him at mountain level, he's still fucking weaker than Rao. Even if we were to equalize the speed of this fight and equalize the fucking uh, AP, just for the sake of argument, let's, let's go full equal. Who's going to win? Rao has way more abilities to keep Akuma at a distance and fuck with him versus Akuma. And this is kind of ironic, given that Akuma actually does fucking have projectile spam in fucking fighting games and shit. But no, so, okay, so first off, Rao's fighting aura is going to fucking fuck with Akuma from where to go. Yes, you could argue, so Rao says that, and uh, at this point we're going to be probably like five minutes into this, so get ready for this one. Rao states to Ray that only someone who's truly mastered their fist can fight him without fucking with his aura, or without getting necked by his aura. Ray was the greatest master of his respective fighting style. The Gaiden confirms this. And he still couldn't touch Rao without his ultimate technique. So, no. If Akuma's still getting stronger and still getting better, he's most likely not going to be able to break through Rao's aura because Ray should have done so. And I'd argue Ray's a better master of his fine style than Akuma is of his. Uh, given the fact that Akuma has fucking not failed to kill people. 
Uh, not only that, Akuma's most powerful attack, the Raging Demon, gets fucked over by Rao's Muso Tenso. Rao's Muso Tenso basically turns him into nothingness itself. One of the counters to the Raging Demon is become is embodying nothingness itself. Yes, the Versus Battle Wiki does go into more detail about rage, hate, darkness, and desires. But uh, when I actually look through it, it says just by embodying nothingness, you get by just fine. So by this logic, Rao should really get through this just fine by embodying nothingness. Which is Muso fucking Tenso. That's also not including the fact that Muso Tenso is a vastly more powerful version of standard intangibility. So even if Akuma isn't tangible, well, Muso Tenso is way superior to basic intangibility. Salder has basic intangibility, and Muso Tenso is a far superior ability to his intangibility. Although we never see them interact with each other, so who knows. Again, it's, uh, Rao also has just fucking pure fucking reactive abilities where he doesn't even have to move. He doesn't even have to think about it, and he'll react instantly. The fact of the matter is, is that Akuma just doesn't have any real answers to Rao. And that's not even including the bullshit fact that all Rao has to do is fucking hit him once and he technically can kill Akuma because any fucking strike from a Hokuto user can basically fucking kill you if they want to. So let's say, because, uh, so in Rao Gaiden, Rao's fighting Salder and Rao punches Salder, but Salder blocks the punch. Nothing happens for a few seconds until Rao's Toki takes effect and activates Salder's pressure points, presumably. So Rao doesn't even have to touch them with his hands. His aura can hit pressure points and fucking kill you. So even if Akuma can block Rao's strikes, all Rao has to do is launch his freaking lace one of his attacks with Toki, and he's going to hit the pressure points and kill Akuma. The, the fact of the matter is here is that even in an equalized fight, Akuma's still going to lose. And let's say Shinakoma comes up. Muso Tenso's going to stomp him out. Muso Tenso can be used freely and spammed freely with no fucking consequences there's no way akuma wins this fight in any capacity uh the only way you could argue akuma wins is if somehow he can land the raging demon maybe but honestly against rao that's not happening and even if it did muso tenso can probably save rao from that since it does turn you into nothingness itself so even if the attack does land rao can probably just fucking neg himself out of there also, uh, while this is in a non-canon uh, entry, to fit, while this is a non-canon event, I do want to point out that technically, in uh, Alzura's Wrath, you can beat Akuma in the middle of the Raging Demon. So anyone who might be comparable to Akuma's speed and strength could potentially beat the shit out of him in his own Raging Demon. It's not canon, so we're not going to include it for the verdict here. But, okay, stat-wise, Rao stomps. Equalized, Rao's going to stomp. And uh, anyone who disagrees with me or feels like they want to debate this matter, feel free to hit me up in the comment section below and we can go ahead and set something up here. Uh, even if you want to just do equalize, we can do that as well. Um, I, I perfectly stand by this outcome. Raul, Raul beats Akuma in every way, shape, and form. Uh, so with that said, that's going to be the end of the versus matchup. Thank you guys for your time as always. Have a nice day. Uh, regarding the stuff I, mentioned, I was mentioning earlier at the beginning of the video. So I did say my next versus matchup at some point a while back was going to be uh, Trish versus Rachel. Uh, I've decided to hold off on that because I'm going to power scale the entire Dead or Alive franchise uh, to accurately scale the girls and everything and see how far, like, how powerful they actually are. Uh, so I'm going to be doing a big old video on that going forward. It'll probably be one of my, like, bigger essay videos, kind of like when I talked about all time and face feats and DMC. So uh, that'll be, that'll be on hold till then. Uh, there will be another versus matchup, hopefully within the next week or two, after the next How Powerful, which as you guys... You guys can probably guess who I'm putting up against Akuma, given because Akuma's gonna be the next one, given some of the you know things I talked about in this video. So, thank you guys for your time as always. Have a nice day. Uh, hopefully, the next versus matchup will be a lot shorter and a lot less talkative. Um, I am get, sort of getting back in the swing of things. So, thank you guys for your time as always, and have a nice day.